You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body, we won't steer you wrong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Lockhart Stadium football field slash soccer. And uh, tonight it's a it's a nice night if you're from where I'm from. It's uh, low to mid 60s, and by the end of the game tonight, it'll still be in the low 60s, and it's a good night for soccer. The wind has picked up a little bit, so we might have some trouble there um, with some vantages one way or the other with the wind. Other than that, we have two teams coming in that are both trying to uh, advance to the playoffs. Right now, Navarro Vikings come in, and they are in sixth position. And, yes, that's right, you take the top four teams in each district. Well, Navarro comes in in sixth position, but the coach told me that if they were to win tonight and somebody else, and I don't recall who he said, were to lose, that they would jump from sixth to third and be in the playoffs. Whereas the Lions are in third, and in order to stay there for the playoff race, they need to win tonight. This is a big win for them. They're in third spot, top four go, but – Everything is so jumbled up right there in the middle that a slip up here or there and the playoff season is over. Last year, the boys should have made it to the playoffs, but of course COVID took over and they didn't get to advance. Had a great team last year. Have a great one this one on this uh, given night, and I'm hoping to be able to call a win for you. The, the last game that we played was last Friday, and it was here, and the boys played good. They outshot their opponents. They, they played very well. Um, Unfortunately, the only mistake they made all night was they uh, received a, a penalty, and not a penalty kick, but they, they fouled someone outside of the box, and um, the kid had a, a, a direct kick. I mean, literally direct kick on goal. Our keeper is not super tall, and the kid w had a fantastic shot to the upper corner, and there's nothing the keeper could have done about it. I mean, it was directly on goal. The kid, all he had to do was pick a corner and shoot for it and hope for the best, and that's what they did. And that was the only scary shot of the night for our opponents, but it was good enough to get them the win as the Lions were not able to uh, to get the victory. The teams are starting to take the field tonight. It's the last night. It's going to be seniors' night, and uh, going to be a big one for those guys as well. Um, 
real quick, going to go through the team. It's not going to be taking long. As usual on soccer, I have Rosie Vega, my QA. I appreciate her doing what she does, making sure we sound okay and everything's going well. Um, also, uh, we uh, have myself where I'm doing the production and I'm doing the play-by-play. So I'm going to be pretty busy keeping the stats, calling the game, and staying on top of things for you. In our last contest, as I said, the Lions dropped uh, the decision one to nothing on a free kick from about, I don't know, 20 yards out. It was what it was, and uh, it ended up costing the boys as they had uh, 13 shots to their opponent's 10. They had six corners to their opponent's two, pretty much kind of in, in, in retrospect, that dominated the match, but they couldn't get the victory. So tonight we're hoping for a better result. And we are underway as Navarro will go ahead and start play. And they're going to quickly play it forward. And the defense is there, and they take control of it. As tonight, Navarro is in all white from head to toe with black trim. The Lions are in all maroon with black socks. And the uh, Lions will be going from right to left on your computer screen tonight. Right now, both teams are just filling each other out, trying to get control of the ball. No one has really done that yet, as both teams are doing a good job of pressuring the ball. Um, Lions doing very well, as like the last time we played, Jorge Cruz is already making himself known. And the Lions are now carrying the ball down the field, trying to get a shot set up, but unfortunately, Navarro has nine people in the box. So they're trying to pack it in, and we're going to have to shoot from the outside tonight. They are really packing it in. We can't even really get a shot off. They're, they've got us outnumbered in the back towards versus our attack players. So hopefully we'll get to we'll see that. We'll start taking some outside shots, maybe loosen them up a little bit. Uh, we'll try to get a through ball down the sidelines. It did not work, and they were able to uh, let it roll out of bounds. So... The Lions will lose possession, and Navarro will get the free kick in goal for the Navarro Vikings as Diego Torres. Again, neither keeper is very tall, so upper 90 shots are going to be a, a factor for these two gentlemen. Navarro now has the ball, trying to go down the right side. They get around the corner. They're trying to to feed what clearly looks like their go-to guy right now. And that is uh, Raleigh. And I'm going to have to turn the lights up a little bit because I can barely read the print on this paper that they gave to me. Diango. Raleigh Diango is the guy that they're trying to set up. His number is 10. And uh, he already looks like a player that has a lot of skill in this match. Again, Navarro is in sixth position, but a win tonight could put them as high as third, whereas the Lions are in third, and a win tonight would keep them there and possibly move them into second. As I said earlier, the uh, Navarro Vikings are really putting a lot of guys back. It looks like they're going to play about anywhere from seven to nine guys back and just kind of counterattack us. They're going to try to get us after they've gotten a steal, get down the field quickly and try to get us while we're trying to get back. Two, four, six, eight. Eight of them are in the box right now as the Lions will have a throw in. Tuesday night, the Lions will be playing the Lady Lions. That's softball. There's a shot on goal, a header, and it's not much of a shot, but it's still a shot. Keeper had to make a play on it. So the first shot of the night goes to the Lions on a header off of a kick from the left side. Uh, as I was saying, though, the Lady Lions softball team will be at home Tuesday night against Travis. We'll have that softball game for you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We'll go live about 645. It'll be Kerry Smith and myself. And uh, we might even have a Kevin Mills, one of our board members, who's really intelligent when it comes to softball. He may come poke his head in and do some color commentating as well. That will be a video game, by the way. We will try to get up in the box and get the camera going. Right now, it's just been back and forth with the two teams here as Navarro is now making a run, but the Lions, for the most part, have held possession. I think if the Lions could strike early, it might, uh, 
it might force Navarro to uh, loosen up a little bit with the clog in the paint or in the goal area and maybe open things up. Hopefully that dive will not be called. It is not. One of their players, we stole the ball from him, and he just fell in, in the corner, and it looked like the referee was thinking about giving him a, a free kick, and I thought, oh, good God, no, because that was a flop. That looked like LeBron James all over the place. <clears throat> Ball's played back. Navarro's going to take it back to their central defender, and they're going to try to switch fields. No, they're going to take it all the way back to the keeper. Right now, the Lions really need to start marking these guys up because when they go back to the keeper, that's the one guy you do want the ball on his foot. Get around the corner. Shot is taken. It's just off wide. Doesn't miss by much, but still miss. So the Lions will get their second shot of the first half. Nothing to show for it. But 34-49 to go first half. No score. Again, the Lions are in third position. They're in a playoff spot right now. I was talking to uh, Kessler Bailey before the game and text message asking her how the girls were doing and were the playoffs something that we could be seeing with the girls. And she said they're going to have to get a lot of breaks here in the last week um, to get into the playoffs. So she'll keep me updated to know if the girls make the playoffs. And if they do, we will, um, we will be covering those games for you. Ball sent down the left sidelines. This is a chance for the Lions. He gets back. Oh, the defense is dropping on him. Basically had four guys on one player. There is a shot taken, though, but unfortunately he fell off balance and was unable to get it in. Mendoza was the one that tried to get that one in there. Took a left-footed shot and didn't have a whole lot of mustard on it because he was falling backwards. The Lions have done a good job, though, because they've kind of maintained pressure, maintained control. And that's where we're at tonight with um, as long as we keep possession away there with the style that, that Navarro's playing, I think it bodes well for the Lions getting a victory here tonight. They try to get the ball crossed in. They're going to say it went out of bounds at the end line, and it will be a goal kick, and it will uh, be Diego Torres from the Vikings who will, well, actually he's not going to play it out, but his teammate will play it out for him. Closing in on 33 minutes to go first half. Remember, 40-minute halves in high school soccer. Navarro is going to take it up the middle of the field as Hernandez has control, gets it to the outside. Vincez takes the shot. It hooks wide left. But for a moment there, I thought we were going to see a, a possible freak goal go on, but it just hooked wide. So three shots to one right now. Lions on top. There are no flags out, so it's really hard to tell how much of the wind is a factor. But I do know when I was out there earlier that it had picked up a lot since when I got to the stadium. The Lions have won possession. They're trying to get behind the defense. Again, the Lions are facing anywhere from seven to nine guys. Every time our attack players get the ball and start moving down the field, they've got seven to nine guys just all over them. Navarro is more worried about keeping us from scoring than they are about scoring themselves. Trying to serve it down the line, it girls out of bounds, and it will go to Navarro. Again, Tuesday night, we'll have Lady Lions softball as they will host Travis at 7 p.m. We'll go live about 6.45 again. Kerry Smith and myself will have the game for you. We might even have a... Kevin Mills showing up and helping us out a little bit during the softball season. A lot of years of coaching Lockhart uh, girls softball and getting them prepared for the varsity level. Navarro is going to get control of the ball and try to go down the right sideline. This is the, so far I've seen the, the probably one of the most floppingest teams I've ever seen. Granted, we did hit the guy on his legs, but the aftermath of that, again, Academy Award-style play right now, looking at the guy's shirts, they're moving pretty hard. So it looks like the wind is at the back of Navarro right now. 
there's a nice long kick. A header by the defender gets it out of there, and that literally saved a goal right there. Great job by the defense. Um, I'm almost positive if I can see the number. I, their numbers are so small, but I'm pretty positive that was De Leon that was able to head it out of there. Good job by the Lions, just pressuring the ball, not giving much up. For Navarro, they're not getting good looks offensively just because of the pressure that's put on. Looks like Rodriguez Gonzalez was the one that stole that, and then as soon as he got it, um, got hit pretty hard and lost control, but he gets it right back. They'll play it out the right wing, but it gets knocked out of bounds. So it'll stay with Lockhart, but it'll be a throw in. <clears throat> I want to thank Rosie Begg and my QA tonight for doing the game with me tonight. Hopefully, Rosie, we'll have another sh uh, early night com you know, compared to what we've had in the past. Last week, we, uh, we had a pretty good cut and dry, get it over with kind of game, and hopefully we'll have one of those again tonight. Lions will lose possession of the ball, but when they do lose possession, it's not for very long. Right now, Cicero has actually played really well for Navarro in the middle of the field. The Lions get the steal. They're coming down the left side. The ball's lost, but they actually were able to retrieve it before it went out of bounds. Rodriguez Gonzalez gets it to the outside. The Lions trying to find an opening. It's just hard to do. There's seven to nine guys back there every time they get the ball in attack. Here they come around the corner. Their one player up with a lot of skills gets behind. The keeper is able to get out there and get the ball. And another flop by the forward. And again, I get that they're getting shoulder to shoulder, but these falling down things probably deserve a card right about now. Uh, that was uh, Diengo that was uh, on the run. He's going to be dangerous. If we don't keep an eye on him, he's going to sneak behind us and score. He's got a lot of skills, and he's extremely fast. He is the only striker they have up front or forward, however you want to call that. Rodriguez Gonzalez gets control. He gets it right back in the center of the field. They're going to take a shot from the outside. It was misplayed, so it didn't even get to the goal mouth, and it's going to be cleared out. So, again, it's going to be a lot of cat and mouse tonight. It's going to be Navarro just packing it in on defense, and if they can get um, their uh, their man up front, Diengo, the ball, then clearly that's their, their game plan. Their game plan is to try to feed him and let him run things down and he is very good. Again, a key factor to this squad, I can tell already. The Lions have controlled the, the, the tempo. They've controlled the possession. They've played well. It's just getting through that wall of guys trying to score a goal. At some point, one of the big guys with the big legs is going to have to start ripping some shots from the outside to try to loosen this defense up a little bit. Substitution taking place, and... Once he gets on the field, we'll get started. We have 27 minutes left to go here in the first half. No score here in Lockhart. Last Friday, we called the game for them. They lost one to nothing, and that was to uh, McCallum. And uh, tonight, tied at zero. They have outshot their opponents three to one thus far. No corner kicks have been taken at this point. Parra is going to take it down the left wing. With his bandana looking thing on his head, he almost reminds me of Ralph Macchio in Karate Kid. There's a shot from the outside. Unfortunately, we were not able to get it to go as Alvera took the shot, but he couldn't get it to go. Check that it was not Alvera. It was Rodriguez Gonzalez that took the shot. But he's got that headband on that kind of reminds me of the Karate Kid does para. And uh, with this wind blowing, it kind of looks like a cape flying behind him as he's running down the field. 
The last game of the regular season here for the Lockhart Lions at home. I just found out tonight that the Lady Lions will be playing tomorrow morning here for uh, a game in the morning. Unfortunately, I've already got a commitment to call some college basketball games, so I'll be unable to do that one. Para gets the ball into the middle, gets it right back. Nice move, crosses it over. I think if they can get around the corner on these guys, that's also a thing. Because I've noticed they've got three of their uh, big guys standing in the middle of the, of the goal area at the top. And the wings are kind of suspect. It's almost like they're packing it in completely in the middle and allowing us to get around the outside. That could be something that we could exploit as well. Maybe getting around the corner, hitting some crosses, and trying to get some headers on the backside or whatever. The Lions will lose possession, and Navarro will take control again. And as soon as I say that, the Lions get it right back, and here we go again. As uh, Cruz battling it away, again, Jorge Cruz has played really well in the two games I've called. Para switches fields with it. Uh, last game, Jorge Cruz and Daniel Sanchez Diaz were uh, – Offensive players of the game for Chuck Nash. So keep an eye on Cruz. He had a really big game last game, and he's already playing well tonight. Uh, someone who's caught my attention tonight, though, has been um, Brian Rodriguez-Gonzalez in midfield. He's played really well so far. Olvera throws it in. They've got a big target uh, as far as uh, it looks like Bustos Miranda is in the middle of the field. They probably had to look at him a little bit, see if he can't get a, a big shot off. As I say that, two guys stand on one in front of him and one behind him. Ball's played down the left side, par with it. And he gets a shot off, but it just misses. The fourth shot of the night for your Lions. Four to one now in shots. Last uh, game, Johnny Sun's defensive players of the games went to Para, Cantara, Lopez, Mars. Those were the three gentlemen that got defensive players of the game for Johnny and Sons. And again, Cruz and Sanchez Diaz were the, the offensive players of the game in our contest last week. Again, <laughs> they've got their the guy they're looking for Kind of tries to sneak in the back on the corner, and he wants to use that quickness to get around these guys and try to get in there and score. But they've done a pretty good job of watching him. Uh, Roli uh, Diengo, they've been all over him, and rightly so, because he can be dangerous. Just looking at him already, he's going to be a dangerous player. We have to keep an eye on him. The ball's played down the left side. They're still battling in the corner. Carrillo with it down the left wing. And he was kind of pushed, and the ball got knocked out of bounds, and the Lions will get it back for a throw in just under 22 minutes to go here in the first half. Sanchez Diaz Jr. throwing it in. Long throw into the mouth. Chance to score. Can't do it as the defender was able to clear it out right before we got to shoot. We tried to play it back in, and now that I'm looking at the corner flags, that wind is really picked up as the Lions are looking at the wind right in their face. So the good news is the wind is blowing in their face and blowing extremely hard based off what I can see from people's jackets and, and the, flat, the corner flags. The good news is the Lions will have the wind at their back in the second half. If the Lions can get any kind of goal mount here in the first half because they've dominated possession they, they will then have the win at their back and they will it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel 
in the second half because you'll have that win at your back and ripping shots is not going to be an issue. That'll be something they can easily do. Long throw in, set up again for the Lions. We're getting close to the halfway point of the first half. They're going to let them play. Nope, they did, actually did call a handball. I really don't know why Texas has gone from a three-man rotate or three-man refereeing crew to a two-man crew, but they got to get with the times. The two-man crew—that's that's old school. That is, you miss so much as a referee with two referees. You got to have a center center judge and the two linesmen. It's just too difficult for two guys to watch everybody, especially at this age where the kids are bigger, stronger, and more likely to be cheap shotters. Para doing a great job, again, of shutting down. They're trying to attack down the right wing, and Para has shut it down virtually every single time they've tried to get down the sideline. So we are under the halfway point here in the first half. Still no score here in Lockhart. Substitution is taking place for Navarro. So now the ball is being played back to the defenders again. Lions finally get control of it, and they're heading the other way. The ball is played down the right side now for the Lions. And it gets too much and gets out of bounds. So Navarro will take back over just under 19 minutes to play here in the first half. Not a whole lot going on. <clears throat> Ball's played all the way back to the defense. They're going to move it forward. It does appear that maybe Navarro is starting to push forward a little bit more because now there are not as many guys back behind the, the line to uh, keep us completely out of the goal area. Again, getting a goal here in the first half for Lockhart would be huge, getting the win at their back in the second half. The Lions trying to get it in there still. Enough guys back there to take on the three that we have up front. The keeper's going to call the ball, and he's going to smother it. Trying to see the number of the young man that was out there. I want to say that was Cantera that was up there. He was in the back. Now I think he's up in the front if my eyes don't deceive me. Again, I do not understand. That's another thing about Texas soccer I don't understand. The referee stopped play, and then he kind of bounced the ball to the player to restart the game, and I'm not used to seeing it done that way. Ball's played forward. Lions have it, but the double team was able to get it cleared out as Cruz was trying to turn to take a shot, and as soon as he turned around, there was a guy there right on top of him. So the Lions will get the throw in, and as usual, it will be Sanchez Diaz Jr. getting ready to launch the bomb. There it goes, in the mouth, and nobody can get there in time. But he goes and runs it down himself and plays it out to his central defender who's going to take a shot, but that's not even going to get close. Keeper had some trouble with it when the players ran onto it, trying to get ahead on it to put it in the goal, but... By the time he got there, it was a little too late. Torres with a big punt with the wind at his back. They'll play it down to Parra down the left side. Back in the middle it goes, trying to switch fields. Bustos with it. Up front, down the right side. Lions trying to get something. 
and it's going to get knocked around. Finally, they're able to clear it out. The Lions will get the ball back for possession, but it looked like the Lions were going to get something to go, and it, either it was misplayed or something, but uh, they just had trouble getting it going, and finally when the kick was made, it deflected off a leg and went out of bounds. Now they're going to give the ball to Navarro. That clearly went out on Navarro, but they get the ball back. <coughs> Lions will maintain the possession in the back, and they're going to work it up the left side again. They've been heavy down the left side. Navarro's been heavy down the right side, so I've seen a lot of the action right here in front of me. Carrillo was battling for it. He felt like he was shielded from the ball. They didn't give it to him, so they're going to call a push on Carrillo, and it will go the way of Navarro. Just under 15 minutes to go first half. Still no score here in Lockhart. Another long boot with the wind at their back. Parra was able to head it out of there. They get it right back. They're getting ready to take a shot. They do get the shot off, but it's not much of a shot as that was uh, Mario who tried to get the shot in. So that's the second shot of the night for Navarro. Easy play on it by the keeper. Hernandez was the one that was able to get on that one. Cruz sends it down the line. Mendoza's trying to get down the field. Gets knocked out of bounds, and now they won't even... Oh, I guess they gave it to Navarro. No wonder why they were trying to keep it away from him. So it'll be a throw-in. They're going to drop it all the way back to their defender. He'll cross the field with it. Good job by the Lions to pick it off. Trying to keep it alive to get it down the left side again. Good move. Maldonado with a great move sends it down the line. Shot taken. Keepers there. It almost looked like that was Penaloza with the shot, left-footed shot. It did not go. It was right to the keeper, but still, fish shot of the first half for the Lions. Facing that strong win with 13 minutes to go here in the first half. No score. Again, give a shout-out to Rosie Vega, my QA, making sure everything sounds good for tonight's game. And I'm Scott Smith giving you a play-by-play, -play, giving you the production. Again, no score. I haven't had to change the scoreboard at all. That's the good thing about calling soccer. You're not changing the scoreboard quite as much. Ball's knocked out of bounds. Lions will keep control. Just under 13 minutes to go, first half. A little push from behind. No one saw it. Lions will get the ball. Castaneda was the one that played it out of bounds. Lions will throw it in. Para with it. Going the other way with it is Hernandez. He gets tripped up. No call. Lions get possession. Playing it down the line, and they hit it too hard. Again, Tuesday night, we'll bring you Lady Lions softball. Tuesday night, the Lady Lions will take on Travis, and they will be playing on their field just down the road here from us, and that game will start at 7 o'clock. We'll go live at 645. That will be a game with video, so you'll be able to see that one uh, throughout the game and listen to us call the game. It'll be Carrie Smith and myself. She's been pretty much my sidekick since uh, football season ended, and uh, and we're going to get you that softball going on, and she'll be with most of the games. Um, she's going to try to get it every softball game we call, and I know that Kevin Mills will occasionally step in with us, our board member who's – Serve softball well here in Lockhart. Ball's played up to the man that they've tried to feed all night long in Diango. He sends it forward. The ball is cleared out, and a uh, very good job there by Sanchez Diaz, Jr. 
he was able to get it out of there before it caused any kinds of problems again. The Lions are looking right in the face of uh, a strong wind to the point where it's blown every flag in the stadium over. That's how hard the winds are blowing right now. Ball's crossed in by Navarro. Everybody fighting to get it out of there. Lions finally do get it out of there, so Navarro will not get the shot they were hoping for. Cruz with it. Gets it down the right line. Back to the middle. Good reverse move. Does it again. Switching the fields and dropping it to their defenders. So they're going to reset. De Leon takes it down the left side. Sends it down the line. Lions trying to get something going here down the left side. But the defender was able to shield it off and do a good job with it. As that was Gonzalez who was able to stop the play. Paro, nope, he will not throw it in. So it will be the long throw of Sanchez Diaz Jr. Just under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. No score here in Lockhart. Long throw. The shot on goal by Cruz, and the keeper makes the save. Torres was, the, was able to make the save. It wasn't Cruz's hardest shot but he placed it well enough that it forced the keeper to have to get on the ground and and uh scoop it up and another shot goes for nothing there for the lions as they've outshot them six to two here in the first half and navarro has the wind at their back balls played all the way back to the navarro defense Excuse me. Ball's played in the middle. Bustos looking to play it down the line. Just a lot of one-two touches going on. Not a lot of moving down the field. They're just controlling the ball. Diango really giving the Lions fits there in the middle of the field right now. Lions get control. They're going to send it up the middle of the field. The shot is taken, and the keeper makes a diving save. That was a beautiful shot by Rodriguez Gonzalez. It does not go. It's a seven shot of the first half, and they forced Diego Torres to use every inch of his body just to get his hands on that ball because it was going into the goal. Just under eight minutes to go first half. Lions have their first corner kick of the night. Actually, it's the first corner kick of the night for everybody. The cross is in, near post. The keeper can't hold on to it. They'll kick it towards back post, and it's in! The Lions will score. As soon as I get to see the number on this young man, I want to say it's number 17, and that's exactly who it was. That is uh, Penazola, the senior who puts that one in. So let's get that written down. And that was at the 745 mark. The Lions will take the lead. So they'll go right down the field against us as we are leading one to nothing. They'll get their shot on goal, but it wasn't much of a shot, so the Lions were able to uh, control that. The Lions have taken eight shots tonight, one goal. Penazola was able to score it at the 745 mark left in the first half. Keep in mind, the Lions are facing the wind. That's a huge goal for them. If they can keep this uh, one to nothing, uh-oh, there's a mistake. Hopefully they'll be able to clean it up, and they do. Paro will come up with it, trying to get it down the left sideline. And, oh, wow, he got knocked to the ground. No call. Referee was standing right there. Parra still battling in there. And they're going to call the foul on us that time. So Parra basically got manhandled and slammed to the ground right in front of the referee. No call. 
and Parra came back to get the ball and bumped into the guy from behind. And I mean, when I say bumped, it was an excuse me bump, and he gets called for the foul. So with the wind at their back, they will have an opportunity here to try to get a shot on goal or at least to put it in the goal mouth. Brian Martinez will be the one taking the kick. He's about 40 yards away from the goal, but again, he's got a strong wind at his back. He'll go uh, back post with it. Cantera is the one that heads it out. They try to get it inside to get a shot off, and that was Avias, and he just missed everything. Matter of fact, it was missed so bad I'm not even going to give it a shot. Eight to three in shots right now. Corner kicks one nothing in favor of the Lions. Goals one to nothing in favor of the Lions as Penizola got the goal to give us the lead at 7:45 mark in the first half. Here we go again as they're trying to make a move. They still have possession. A whistle has been blown, and again, I don't even know what these guys are calling right now. That's the second time the Lions have been knocked to the ground, and that's the second time the Lions have been called for the foul. So they're going to get a sub in as, I don't know. It's running clock. I guess that's the good thing is the clock keeps moving, and with the Lions leading one to nothing here in the first half with the strong wind in their face, the longer these guys waste time subbing and everything else, the better it is for the Lions. Because when they get that wind at their back, the way they're possessing this game, and, main, and they have pretty much own possession tonight. And another foul called on the Lions. <laughs> I don't blame that one. I don't blame him for that one. And he's probably going to get a yellow card for that one. Oh, goodness. Perez Maldonado did not like the fact that they kept moving the ball 10 yards ahead of where the referee said to take the shot, so he finally kicked it back where it needed to go. I thought he was going to get carded for it, but he didn't. Took it into his own hands. The guys were trying to move it up 10 yards, and he said, nope, don't think so. Just at four minutes to go here in the first half, one nothing Lions. Navarro has the ball near the goal mouth. The Lions have done a good job of maintaining possession the whole first half tonight. And that's with the wind in their face. I can't wait to see this second half when they're going to have that wind at their back. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to possess the ball and maybe take some outside shots and get some goals to go. There was a foul. That's the first foul I think that may have been called tonight on Navarro. As uh, it looked like they got... Carbajal with uh, the foul, and the Lions are now going to take their time with 3.25 to go first half. Milking that clock. Got a one to nothing lead right now, the Lions do. Para in the middle it goes. Olvera. The ball's played to the right side now. Ball's crossed to the middle of the field. There's a man on the back side. Trying to get behind the defense. Oh, and he just can't get the shot off, and they'll clear it out. I'm pretty sure he's not a left-footed player. He is on the left side of the field, but I don't think he's a left-footed player. Had he been a left-footed player, I think he would have ripped a shot at that point in time, but he tried to bring it back to his right foot and was unable to get the shot off. It's going to be a throw-in here for De Leon. Trying to get turned around and get a shot. Now they've got all those guys in the back again. Para does a great job of stealing the ball back. Already Para has uh, punched his ticket for defensive player of the game. That would be uh, second game in a row he's done that. He's just played phenomenal here in the first half. And I can only call him the karate kid just because of the bandana on his head. De Leon will get the ball on the back side. He's going to play it up to Para. Those two have worked well together tonight. They're trying to play it down the field. There's a handball, not called. I can see it from about 45 yards away. I don't know why they can't see it standing right there. Ball's played down the left line, 
And two, four, six, eight, nine players in the box right now for Navarro. One and a half minutes to go first half. If the Lions could somehow sneak a shot in here right before the half, that would almost be devastating to Navarro. The Lions will have the wind at their back in the second half. Long throw. There's a flick. There's the shot. And another great save by Diego Torres. Again, he had to go full body across the goal to make that dive. He tipped it away well enough that one of his players was able to clear it out. And we are now to just under a minute to go. Lions still leading one to nothing, but trying to get another goal before the half. I would say possession tonight has been at least 85% Lions' favor. And, and you can only imagine what the second half is going to be like when the wind is at their back. Nice crossover. They're going to send it to the other side of the field. 30 seconds left. They're going to need to hurry and get a shot off here. Somebody's going to have to find an opening and take a shot. And a foul is going to be called on the Lions. I feel like I'm watching World Cup soccer tonight because when somebody goes down for Navarro, you, you would have thought that somebody shot him with a gun because they just lay there and roll around for a while. Seven seconds is what we'll, the clock will stop with. Here in a second, we're going to see this person bounce right up and run off the field. And there he goes. Pops up and off the field he goes. At some point in time, the officials have got to decide when they're going to card people for flopping. The funny thing is this team's much bigger than we are, so I know it's not that we're knocking all these guys down. Clock is restarted with seven seconds left. That was going to do it for the first half. So at halftime, it's your Lockhart Lions 1, the Navarro Vikings 0. So we're going to go ahead and take a break when, and listen to some of the commercials for our sponsors. Before we go to that commercial break, I'm going to go ahead and read the sponsors of the folks that do not have commercials with us, starting with The Pearl, Ronda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, State Farm, and Westies. We thank you folks very much for your sponsorships for the games because without you, we wouldn't have these games. want to give a shout-out to Jeffrey Michelson and Kevin Mills, my my two uh, board members that uh, kind of run the show in, the, in behind the scenes. Um, had a good talk with Kevin today. I think we're going to have him out there calling some, uh, some softball with us and uh, look forward to, for that. Now we're going to go ahead and take those breaks. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vipe Live. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. Kpart Design Build LLC is a general contractor who resides and serves Lockhart residents and surrounding communities. Kpart Design Build LLC is a local builder established in 2006 and is insured, bonded, and accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Kpart Design Build LLC provides both residential and commercial new construction, remodeling services, and specializes in kitchen and bath design. Call 512-784-6940 or email kpartdesignbuild at yahoo.com to schedule a consultation with free estimate. Follow them on Facebook at Kpart Design Build and at Kpart Kitchen Bath. Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development a few miles north of Lockhart, Texas. 
Come on in to Texas Oil Express, where we can change your oil in under 10 minutes. We also do inspection stickers. Be sure to shop Lockhart first and check us out on Facebook. Voted Caldwell County's best oil change in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2018, and 2019. Link Realty proudly supports Lockhart Lions Athletics. For all of your real estate needs, come see Link Realty on the square in Lockhart or visit them online at linkrealtytx.com. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! For your plumbing service work in Caldwell County, call Darren Meitler from Meitler Plumbing at 512-398-3146. Meitler Plumbing, a local and family business, has been in the Caldwell County area for over 30 years. Voted best plumber in Caldwell County multiple times. Holds a master's license and bonded. Call Meitler Plumbing for your plumbing service work at 512-398-3146. Owner Darren Meitler, a 1989 Lockhart alumni and football captain for for the Lockhart Lions. Go Lions! Once a lion, always a lion. Central Texas Refuse LLC is a highly respected full-service waste collection and recycling company serving Central Texas and the surrounding areas. CTR has proudly been servicing the cities of Round Rock, Cedar Park, and Lockhart for decades. CTR is one of the largest independent waste collection service companies in Central Texas. Founded in 1981, CTR has grown through organic expansion and currently operates from four primary locations in South East Austin, Round Rock, Lockhart, and from Wilco, a comprehensive single stream recycling facility in Williamson County. CTR is honored to be a sponsor of Lockhart High School Boys and Girls Sports. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Lockhart, Texas, where the Lions are up one nothing and a half. Um, I would have to venture to guess the way the standings are right now, this win tonight would pretty much guarantee the Lockhart Lions are going to the playoffs. Going to go ahead and real quick give you the stats for the first half. Um, for Navarro, they had three shots on goal, no corner kicks, and honestly, they really they had that one kind of funky little curveball thing that I don't think it was meant to be, but it almost ended up going in the backside of the net, but it curved off and missed. That's the only scary shot we've seen all night. Um, it it was pretty much 85% domination of possession for the Lions. And the scary thing for Navarro is the Lions were in heading straight into a, a wind that's blowing very hard. As a matter of fact, the corner flags are flapping around like nobody's business, and it, most of the time during the game they fall over the wind is blowing so hard. Um, there are no flags out other than the corner flag, so I really can't read it off of you, but I can tell you this. The soccer ball was placed at the 50-yard line and is now rolled down to the 40. So, again, the wind is blowing pretty hard out here. So, with that being said, the Lions had nine shots on goal, one corner kick, and uh, Penazola scored at the 7.45 mark in the first half, making it one to nothing Lions. So, that was huge because now the Lions will have the ball the second half with that wind at their back. And if they can possess the ball when the wind at the back, like they did in the first half with the wind in her face, this is going to be a long second half for Navarro because they're already packing it in and trying to keep the Lions from getting you know any shots off on goal. Now they're going to have to hope like heck that they can stop the Lions from taking outside shots and using that wind to their advantage. And uh, then in, in rever reverse of that, once they do get possession after you know they block one of our shots or whatever else, they're going to have to really quickly uh, counterattack and try to get the ball down the field. And the way they've been possessing the ball, it isn't going to happen very often. Also, if they run the same formation, they're only going to have one or two guys in attack versus the four we already have in the back. So we'll have them outnumbered. Um, they just Right now, they're playing seven to nine people in the goal area, trying to make it to where the Lions can't give a shot off. And, you know, for the most part, it's worked. It has worked for the most part. 
Fortunately, though, uh, Penazola was able to strike it home from, I want to say, and again, keep in mind, this wind is blowing hard. He was about 19 yards away, maybe 20 yards away from the goal and hit it perfectly and uh, put it in the corner of the goal and put the Lions up one nothing. We're about two minutes away from the second half starting. It, again, probably senior night, although they're not doing anything announcing-wise or anything like that. They didn't have any, you know, the parents lined up or walking or anything, but it is senior night for the, the Lions. And I guess real quickly, while I still have a little little bit of time left here, it looks like Ivan Lopez Mares is one of the seniors. Ulysses Mania, um, Abraham Perez Maldonado, Daniel Sanchez Diaz Jr., Jose Ru uh, Ruiz Mendoza, Ismael De Leon, Alfredo James James, Victor Sanchez, Hoguer Penazola, and the last one, Jose Carrillo Soto. Those are the seniors. Oh, check that. Pedro Hernandez, the goalkeeper. Those are your seniors for this year's soccer team. Uh, most of these guys I've been watching since they were freshmen starting on this varsity team. Some of these guys that started as freshmen are now juniors on this team. So they've been around for quite a while. And they know how to play the game. And back when they were little bitty things getting knocked around on the field and still doing a good job, now they're the big dogs, even though they haven't grown a whole lot. They're still the big dogs, and now they know what to do. They've been doing this for four years, some of them three years, and they're really looking good. Possession, I'm going to give it an A+. I mean, I've watched a lot of soccer in my time, and it was total domination for the Lions. All that I can say. Um, barring any meltdowns or mistakes by the defense with the wind at their back, the Lions right now, as I said in the first half, should be, it should be like shooting uh, fish in a barrel. I mean, you can take it all the way down the field if you want to to get your shot. But if I were the Lions, I would let my center mids, my def center defenders, the guys that have good legs and maybe some pretty good shots on them, I'd let them get the ball somewhere around 30 to 35 yards out and just start ripping shots. Line drives, try to knock somebody's head off. Aim at somebody's head line drives and see if the wind can't help it into the goal because both keepers are fairly short and uh it's going to be difficult especially for uh you know navarro because their keeper is shorter than our keeper and that being diego torres now giving diego torres some pats on the back that keeper kept us from being up three to nothing at halftime he made two outstanding saves in the first half that kept him in the ball game. And now that I said that about him, I think they've made a change in goal. Going to have to look and see. This guy looks a lot thicker than the first guy. It looks like this one is Jeremy Hernandez. It is Jeremy Hernandez. So they have changed keepers. Not sure I would have done that because their first keeper kept him in the ball game. And uh, the Lions will have the ball going from left to left, right on your computer screen and a one to nothing advantage here in the second half with the wind at their back right now they're just playing keep away from the two or three guys that they have in attack for navarro the lions are finally going to advance it down the left side it looks like they've moved para up to the front now instead of the back they're going to cross it in a bicycle kick doesn't go. We almost got to see a bicycle kick, but he whiffed at it. That was a nice try, though. I'll give him a, you know, give him a kudos for credit. Had he hit that, that could have been a goal. He was set up perfectly. He just missed it. You don't see high school kids very often doing a bicycle kick. If you do not know what a bicycle kick is, it's like you're riding a bicycle upside down in the air and kicking at the goal oh what a great shot by the central defender the keeper just about let it go through his hands he wasn't ready for that and that i believe was cantera that took that shot no it was not it was um lopez Mares that took that shot he was not ready for that one they need to keep doing that they're still in attack coming down the side on the left so the Lions have already 
gotten one shot here in the first half. That gives them 10 for the game, or in the second half, it gives them 10 for the game. Again, want to give a shout out to Rosie Perez, uh, Rosie Vega, I'm sorry, Rosie Vega is my QA tonight. She uh, was with me last Friday in the one to nothing loss, but tonight we're going to get you folks a win. Ball's cleared out by Navarro, but the, uh, immediately the Lions get it right back. They're still packing it in the back. Seven, eight, nine guys back there at all times. Only one guy up front, and that is Raleigh Diengo, and he is talented. But right now, he's going to have a hard time getting the ball because it's been all Lions. We've literally played two and a half minutes of soccer, and I think Navarro's touched the ball one time. Here comes the Lions again, trying to get a shot off. The keeper's able to get out there. The defender did a good job of shielding the forward from getting that in there and scoring. I'm trying to see who that forward is, because body-wise, I, I think it might be our football player, but I can't tell. He doesn't look tall enough. Ooh, what a beautiful shot. They ripped the shot from about 30 yards out. It hit the crossbar on the football field. I think that was Maldonado that took that shot. Again, the numbers are so small out there, I can't see him very well. But body-wise, that looks like Maldonado that took the shot that ripped off the crossbar of the goal post on the football. Lions are still fighting to maintain the possession here. They get it right back. They're sending it in. I mean, with the style of play right now that Navarro's playing, a foul was called, so Navarro will get a free kick. But the Lions could literally have four or three or four guys back on defense, one in the middle, two in the wings, or two central defenders and two wing backs, and just have them stand back there at about the 50-yard line on the football field. And if Navarro clears it out, those four guys are taking on one player, and they'll be able, oh, there's another flop. And he pops right back up. He was... Might have shot, so it looked like somebody shot him with an elephant gun, but he pops right back up. Um, but anyways, those four guys can stop the one guy and just keep serving it up there and letting our offensive players rip some shots. As the ball is up the field, it's through. Lions trying to get to it. They do, and the keeper makes a great save. So I said, I don't know that I'd have taken Torres out. Well, Hernandez has come on and done a good job himself. He's a much bigger kid. He's not taller, but he's a much bigger kid, and he knows how to use his body. As he came out, and he shielded that ball. There was no way that ball was getting in the goal. Right at 35 minutes to go in the ball game here, one nothing Lions on top. There's going to be a sub. And I'm looking over there, and, I mean, they've got a pretty long roster sheet, but it only looks like they've got five or six guys sitting on the bench, so they might be a little thin of players. There's going to be a corner kick for the Lions, though. This will be their second one of the night, first one of the second half. They already have 11 shots to three against Navarro. Ooh, they just about scored on the corner kick. They were able to get it out of there. Another one of their players has taken a dive. And they're going to card one of the Lions. It looks like it is going to be Rodriguez Gonzalez who's going to get a yellow card. What I don't understand is after the referee has made the call, their players are hopping straight back up like nothing ever happened to them. That is a yellow card. That is a flop. That's why I don't like two referees as a crew. You have to have a central center uh, referee and two linesmen because stuff like that doesn't happen when you have three out there when you have two it's hard to see everything so the ball's played in this is the first time navarro's actually had control of it in the second half and as soon as i said that they lose the ball right back to the lions one of our guys gets knocked to the ground and they are going to finally call a foul now where we're at at the 40 yard line on the football field and they're going to card their player I would actually shoot this on goal. Get somebody who's got a nice shot from a distance 
and got a pretty accurate leg, let them rip the shot because this is going to be difficult for a keeper to catch, to judge and catch with the wind in his face. And then with that, the Lions are able to run onto it, maybe stick it in, but they're not able to even put it anywhere near on goal. It goes way wide right. So, again, with the wind at your back, get a guy with a good, accurate leg, just tell him to put it on goal. Let your, as soon as the ball is kicked, your guys can chase in there after it. And if the keeper taps it away, they get a chance to put it back on a, on a tip back. Otherwise, uh, he might just score on the shot. Lions get possession again. Good, oh, tripped us up. And they're going to give us the call. So we're going to have a free kick very close to the goal. And it looks like, I'm trying to see who they're going to let kick it. So the man that scored the goal is taking the free kick. Penazola going to line it up left-footed. He's going to be about 30 yards away from the goal. But he needs to just rip it upper 90. Put it upper 90, see what happens. Keep your knee over the ball. Aim at people's heads in the, in the wall and hope that they don't head it out and might see a goal here. There's the kick, but it's too high. He, he chipped it. He didn't get his knee over the ball. So an opportunity falls on the wayside as um, the, the Lions haven't yet figured this uh, win situation out. They've possessed the ball probably 99% of the time here in the second half. But when they get free shots or free kicks, they're not even putting them on goal. If they get them on goal, I think they're going to find that they're going to get pretty good success here. The ball is cleared out by Navarro. one nothing Lions, 32 minutes to go here in the second half. A win tonight would pretty much secure the Lions into the playoffs, which we will bring you those games. ball will be thrown in by Navarro this is the first time Navarro has crossed the midfield stripe and that was for two seconds as the Lions clear it down the field they they weren't messing around with that the ball was knocked out and Navarro will get another throw in <clears throat> the Lions have done a good job when they throw it in. They're clearing it out. Unfortunately, they're kicking it out of bounds and giving it right back to them. Again, not like it's going to matter at this point because the Lions, I kid you not, have had possession 99% of the time. Jorge Cruz trying to get through. Great defensive play there on Cruz as he just about snuck that one through. Had that defender not gotten his foot on the ball, Cruz was going to walk that one into the goal. Uh, Brian Arujo was the one that made the play. Nice little slide tackle that kept Cruz from getting past and getting to the keeper. Long throw. They almost caught it into the goal. And finally, Navarro kicks it out, but I want to say it's a corner kick. So the Lions flicked it on goal. It looked like Penazola again, but one of their defenders was able to Headed out, and then the other one, before it went back into the goal, off the header, he kicked it straight up in the air and it went backwards. Nope, they're going to say it went off of us. I did not see a single one of our players touch that ball, but they're going to get a goal kick. So we're at the 30-35 mark here in the second half, one nothing Lions, and they're just knocking on the door. Like I said, it's going to be like shooting fish in a barrel here in the second half. They got that strong wind at their back. They probably had 85% of the possession in the first half with the wind in their face. And so far, Navarro has crossed the midfield stripe one time in the second half. Navarro's getting starting to show some signs of frustration. His uh, ball was misplayed, and you could see that the player was pretty upset about his play on it. The Lions about shot Navarro 12-3 tonight. They have two corner kicks. Navarro hasn't had a corner kick yet. There's the man. Alfredo James James is on the field. You can't mistake that body anywhere. 
built like a middle linebacker, the kicker and punter of the high school football team, is now playing up front. He's a senior. He's now playing up front as a striker for the Lions. He is by far the tallest and biggest man out there. I'd like to see him get on the scoreboard tonight. All the times in football that he flipped the field for the high school football team punting the football and all those nice long field goals he'd put in. There's a shot by Jamez, and that one's that kid's paying for it. He's bent over. That hit him right in the stomach. I've seen Jamez kick a football, so you can imagine what the soccer ball is doing when he kicks it. But he hit that kid right in the stomach with the ball, and I don't think that kid's able to breathe right now. But I earlier I thought Jamez was on the field, but I, I couldn't tell because he didn't look tall enough. This one you can tell. Jamez almost got to it again, but the keeper was able to punch it out before Jamez could get to it. No shot on goal, but the Lions just keep knocking on the door with a one to nothing advantage. The one guy that could beat him up front now has the ball. This is the second time they've crossed the midfield stripe here in the second half. They've got some numbers up front trying to tie this score. And the Lions will clear it out. So the Lions put a quick stop to that offensive thwart, and they're going to run their team back to the defensive side, playing that counterattack soccer. Uh, ball's played forward there by Guevara. Lions are going to get it right back. Nice little heel ball down the sideline. Penazola, the man of the action, or the man of the match right now, getting gets it on the back side, but they're not going to be able to run it down. That's the only negative thing about the wind being at your back. You cannot play direct through balls because they're just going to go out of bounds. When you have the wind like this, you cannot play direct through balls. You have got to go diagonally with the ball. Let your players run on to it instead of the wind just taking it out of bounds. They'll get enough practice at it, though, here in the second half because they have dominated possession the entire game. And we're going to have a foul. I knew that one was coming. <laughs> Penazola actually helped him to the ground that time. I, I saw it clearly. Lions... Still battling. They're going to get the throw in. You can just see the frustration right now for Navarro. They just aren't able to get any offense going, and basically it's because of the way they're playing their formation. But you're not going to have much offense when you have one striker and the rest of the guys are out playing defense in front of the goal. Every once in a while, they'll send four or five guys up, but it doesn't happen very often. 50-50 balls in the middle of the field right now. Navarro gets control of it. But they run into themselves. Jamez does a good job of knocking people around out there. Keeper will pick it up. He's going to punt it out. It's amazing to me that They've already learned that Alfredo will knock you down because there's nobody around him. He is literally by himself on the field right now. Nobody wants to cover him. This is the most dangerous thing they've had at, at going this second half, and, and Cantera does a great job of getting it out of there, and it gets pushed out of bounds. They're going to play it all the way back. Oh, nice deflection there, but fortunately for the keeper, it rolled right to him. It ends up being a shot. As the defender tried to clear it, it was uh, Gavara that uh, tried to clear it out. He hit one of our players right in the leg, and it ricocheted right to the keeper. Again, it's just a matter of time before the Lions find the net.
They're taking their time. They're spread, trying to spread them out a little bit. They're doing a good job of trying to spread them out. There's a shot from way outside, but it's going to miss the goal. We won't count it as a shot. But the ball was played forward. Uh, they were trying to get uh, the keeper asleep there, but both of the keepers for Navarro have played very well. The second half keeper, um, Hernandez, just doing a good job of using his body to shield the ball. He, he's very well, very talented at keeping the ball or his body in front of the ball and uses his size well, whereas the keeper in the first half uses cat-like reflexes and uh, was able to keep two balls out of the goal just because of his headlong dives that he, that he made to make those saves. Navarro got it across midfield again. As soon as they did, the ball was cleared out. Here, Oh, the Lions just about got a breakaway. Kentaro with it now. He will play the ball down the right side. Kentaro gets it back, trying to beat three guys and does, but he gets tripped, and finally they'll make the call. Kentaro beat three guys, and then he got tripped up, and they called the foul. So, this time, you really don't have a good angle at it, so maybe you do want to pass it to the back post and let your guys run on to it. They're asking to receive 10 yards off the ball to make the kick, and the referee will do so. <clears throat> so it will be struck from the right side of the field. He's got the back post and all of his buddies on the back post. Looks like they're going to try to chip it in. Maybe he'll shoot for the back post. And he hits it to the near post. They still have possession, and, and now they lose it. But then they get it right back. So Cantera gets fouled again. Actually, no, that was Elvera that got fouled. Cantera was the one that gave it to him. Now we have another gentleman taking the kick. Let's see who's going to – is this De Leon? It is De Leon. De Leon has got a scary shot. This kid has played up front. He's now a defender. He can play midfield. This kid can play anywhere. Nice little chip right at the goal, but the keeper goes up and gets it. So great idea by De Leon, but he can't get it to go as the keeper was able to get up and get it. 22 minutes to go in the match. One to nothing, Lions. You keep thinking another goal is coming for the Lions. Navarro has a run going. They've got four guys down the field. The Lions doing a good job of trying to keep the ball out of there. The guy gets played to the ground. They're still on their feet. They're going to cross it in the middle. It gets deflected away. Crossed again, gets deflected away. Navarro sure is trying to get a goal here, but they can't. And now the Lions are going to come back in a counterattack. Down the line it goes from Jamez, and he's definitely uh, more accurate at kicking field goals than he is at passes. I'm going to have to give him a hard time about that one. Good relationship with Jamez. Jamez Alfredo's a great kid and love him to death. Uh, but I'm going to tease him about that pass. Lions cruise, intercepts it, going the other way are the Lions. And they were able to get it out at the last second. The Lions have been like one step away of getting a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper three times here in the last couple minutes. We're getting ready to close in on the halfway point of the second half. Again, 40-minute halves are played in high school boys and girls soccer. one nothing Lions. This win would pretty much almost guarantee the Lions will be in the playoffs. The girls are going to need to win tomorrow and have some help for them to get into the playoffs. And I want to thank Kessler Bailey for letting me know about that before the match so that I could get that on the air to know what was going on. Another... White jersey on the ground, and now they're just fine. Like I said, they, they flop enough to get the call, and after the whistle blows, they hop up, and they're just fine. That is a yellow card. I don't care where you're at.
putting on the fantastic footwork he is right now after being uh, shot by the shotgun just a minute ago. And there's another one that flops to the ground. And he gets the call. Now, he hops right back up. I'm sorry, but you guys are missing a good game. Because this is about as much flopping of I as ever seen. I don't even know if LeBron James has flopped this much in an NBA basketball game. So the clock was, has been stopped at 1907 as one of their players is going to limp off the field now. Substitution is coming in. <clears throat> Free kick to Navarro. Nice deep kick into the wind. Diango had the ball. He flops in another call. Let me guess, in five seconds, he's going to hop up and be just fine. There is, this has got to be part of their practice plan. I mean, these guys must practice this in practice. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, but it's like watching World Cup soccer. So they'll get a free kick in a dangerous position. Albado Serena is going to take the kick. Everybody but two players for their team is in the goal. A three-man wall is set up. I wouldn't even have a wall. There's no reason to have a wall. Just mark their guys up. Shot at goal and over the top. It was a good shot, but it went over the top. Their first shot of the second half, their fourth of the game. The Lions with 13, no, check that, 14 shots. Nine of those coming in the first half. We still have 17.48 to play here in the ballgame, one to nothing Lions. Again, I really believe that the Lions are going to score another goal as much as they've had possession. Eventually, they're going to find that net. The first goal was scored at the 7.45 mark in the first half by Penazola. The Lions get the ball at the other end. They're going to cross it in, and the great job there defensively as uh, Tenahero was able to get back there and clear it out. It's going to be a goal kick to the Lions. This will be their third one of the game, second one of the second half. And it looks like De Leon is running down there to take the corner. We are now at the 17-minute mark. Again, a win by the Lions, and I th I'm pretty positive that that clinches a playoff spot for them. Another goal right here would make a huge statement and get them a little more relaxed. The ball's up. It's loose. Shot, and they just miss. It looks like um, Perez Maldonado just missed on the shot. That's their sixth shot of the game, or the second half, 15th of the game. They have three corner kicks, two in this half. <clears throat> the ball's played out, but it just goes straight out of bounds, and the Lions will retain possession. The first half, I think it was 85 to 15% in possession in favor of the Lions going into the wind. Here in the second half, it's probably been 95-5. Of the two matches I've watched, the only thing I see that the Lions struggle with is putting the ball in the net. They do everything else well. Here comes a chance at a shot. He rips it. The keeper makes the save and somehow is able to smother the ball. That was a great shot by Daniel Sanchez Diaz Jr., the senior, and the keeper had to smother it because it just about went between his legs into the goal. Beautiful shot. Lions trying to get possession back again. A foul is called. And it looked like they called Murillo got fouled, so they'll get a free kick. 
uh, clock has been stopped at 15-12. A, a red card has been given. It looks like Ivan Lopez Matas gets a red card, so the Lions will now play a man short. So the Lions are playing a man short the rest of the game. So at 15-12 mark, and I'm going to write that down, the Lions had a 1-0 lead. Now they're playing a man down. Let's see if they can continue to control the clock or the possession. Navarro's kind of gotten a little excited here knowing they're a man up on the field. and Now they're starting to maintain the possession here. Nice defensive play. Ball's chipped up over the wall, and the keeper does a fantastic job of keeping it away from the goal, but they're going to say it was a goal kick. Second shot this half by Navarro, five for the game. The Lions have 16 shots, seven in this half. One to nothing is a score, 14-25 to go in the ball game. Hoguer... Penazola scored the goal at the 745 mark in the first half to give the Lions the lead. There's a long kick by the Lions. Can they get to it, though? It doesn't look like it. It looks like the keeper's actually going to get it. So we'll see if things have, will change now that the Lions are playing a man down. Ever since our... Uh, player has been kicked out Navarro has had the possession it really doesn't even need to change possession wise because you oh there's a chance for a breakaway Hamez is trying to run it down but he's not quite quick enough to get there but you know when you're a man down and you have a one nothing lead you literally could put one guy up front Put your other guys mark up 10 to 10 against what they have on the field. Or not even play with a forward and just mark them up evenly and, you know, not let them have that extra guy out there. You can still play them. There's a legs taken out from under James. Or ha <laughs> oh, good Lord. Alfredo James gets upended and the Lions will get a free kick. 12.50 to go here in the ballgame. one nothing Lions on top. Want to give a shout-out to Rosie Vega, my QA. Thank you, young lady, for helping me out tonight. The free kick was a nice one. They just didn't put it on goal. Again, when they have those free kicks, they got to put them on goal so that if the keeper misses the ball, mishandles the ball, your forwards are there to run it in and stick it back home. And... We're kind of trying to go back post and things like that, and we're just kicking it out of bounds. Fifty-fifty balls won by the Lions. Trying to get around this defense. They finally do. Trying to turn the corner. Good defense there by Navarro as they were able to kick it out for a throw in. We are now 12 minutes away from the end of this game. Real quickly, when we get ready for the throw-in, I'm going to give a shout-out to the folks that do not have commercials with us. Start out with the Pearl, Ronda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, State Farm, and Westies. Thank you, folks, for your sponsorships. The Lions will throw it in on a deep throw-in. The header misses the goal badly. It was a well-planned set-up play. I mean, it clearly looked like that's what they meant to do, but they missed the goal. Even a man down, the Lions have still had pretty good possession. They have Quintera, De Leon, and uh, Sanchez Diaz Jr. in the back. The only three, defend three defenders they have back there right now. And honestly, those three guys alone can, can handle it by themselves. The shot by Jamez. He can't quite get it to go as the keeper was there. That is the eighth shot of the second half, 17 on the game. The 
Nice diagonal pass. The Lions run it down. Into the corner it goes. Can he run it down, though? Oh, he slips and falls. He did, he did manage to keep it in play, but he slipped and fell, and the keeper had an easy pickup on that one. Great hustle there as Carrillo was able to get down there and run that down. Long through ball. Got to be careful on this one, do the Lions, and they get it out. Great defense there. As that was De Leon that was able to put it out and force them to throw the ball in. Also, killing some clock. So again, if, if I'm kind of looking at the scoreboard, looking at the time that's left, if I'm the Lions defense, instead of trying to dribble the ball or uh, you know play with it, short passes, things like that, literally at this point in time in the game, you're sending everything on a through ball diagonally down the field, letting your teammates run onto it. That way, worst case scenario, your opponents are going to have to go 100 yards every time you send it down the field and it's going to burn clock and maybe you'll get lucky and get a breakaway goal but if nothing else you're keeping the ball away from your own goal and here comes an opportunity right here for the lions shots taken keeper is there i've already noticed that their keeper is quick to fall to his knees so maybe give him a, a little faint and then and once he goes to his knees, then going ahead and taking the shot. So the first mistake I've seen tonight is a handball by the defense. And Navarro with 8.33 to go in the ball game has a chance from about 20 yards out to uh, put a free kick on goal and tie this thing up. This is the same kind of area where they gave up the goal last Friday. Kind of a, just a silly mistake, and now you're giving them an opportunity right in front of your goal. So we'll see if Navarro can take advantage of it. They got everybody but two guys in that goal mouth right now, Navarro does. There's the chip, and he hits the upright on the football field. So that'll be a goal kick to the Lions. So they were very fortunate there that that did not go in. Hopefully there will be no more mistakes like that because that was a blatant handball. Saw it from all the way up here, and it was on the other side of the field. Long kick, beautiful kick by the defender. He kicked that across the 50-yard line, and he was down near the end of the end zone. Nice header as they get it out of the box. Now the Lions send it just like I'd said earlier. Down the field, trying to get a breakaway. Jamez trying to run onto it, and they kicked it too far for him. So if they had something nice set up there, again, they sent a long through ball. The player ran onto it, sent it over to Jamez, and Jamez just couldn't run it down. And now... Here comes Navarro the other way on a counterattack. Diango with it on the left side. Great defense there by both defenders. And they call the foul. Again, this is the floppiness team I have ever seen. That was a beautiful slide defensive tackle. There was no foul on that whatsoever. It was such an obvious not foul call that their player thought it was a throw in. So they're going to get a free kick from the left side. Six and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Another flop gets them a call, and now they have another opportunity to try to score right in front of our goal. I cannot believe these two officials are falling for this. This is worse than the World Cup. Backside post. The Lions were able to clear it out. Hamez is going to send it down the field. Beautiful job by our place kicker in high school football. And here we go the other way. Around the corner he goes. He's behind the defense. He's got one man to beat. And the keeper is able to beat him. That's the only man he had left to beat, and the keeper beat him to the ball. Ten shots here in the second half for the Lions. 
There's a through ball. The Lions are going to have to hurry and get that out of there, and they do. Good defense. That was um, Sanchez Diaz Jr. who listened to his keeper, sent it out the sideline because he had a guy right on his heels getting ready to steal the ball from him trying to score. So we're kind of in a helter-skelter mode right here as they've had a lot more opportunities now that we're a man down. The Lions get it out again. And Navarro puts it right back into play. Navarro doesn't have anybody playing back now. They have pushed everybody forward. The, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but these officials, <laughs> they haven't caught. Okay, good. I was going to say, they were going to give Navarro the ball after Navarro clearly kicked it out of bounds. They talked to each other, and they got it straight. The Lions are going to make some substitutions here late in the game. Try to stall some clock. We're trying to see what the referee's doing. He's asked for the the... The, for the coach to come out, and the coach is running onto the field. I think he's wanting them to put time on the clock. Oh, now I see what's going on. So the fans are yelling some things the official's not appreciating. The official asked the coach to come tell the fans to be quiet. And the coach did it. And now we're getting ready to resume play. Now, having said that, officials get paid very well for their travel and to be at a game. And if you can hear fans in the stands and are listening to fans in the stands, then you're not doing your job because you're getting paid to ref the game, not listening to the fans in the stands. But having said that, we'll move on. The Lions are trying to get it down the field again. They do. Remember, they're a man down. Navarro has 11 men on the field. Lockhart has 10. And yet they're still pretty much dominating play. I mean, not as much as they were, but they still are. Whoops, a whiff there by the defender. A handball. And it'll be a free kick for the Lions. So it'll look like Daniel Sanchez Diaz Jr., who pretty much does it all. He kick, takes the free kicks. He takes the long throw-ins. The senior is going to have the free kick here. Being a senior, if I was him, I'd shoot at the goal. He is about 60 yards away from there, but he has a long wind in his back. He chips it at the goal. The keeper punches at it. It's loose. A flick over the top. The Lions tr trying to win the ball, and the official's going to call a handball on the Lions. That was a beautiful kick by Sanchez Diaz Jr. Actually probably should have gotten a goal out of that. Somebody should have gotten a goal out of that. It was a beautiful kick. So if anything tonight, the Lions are learning maybe when it comes playoff time how to play a man short on the field and still be successful because they've done a pretty darn good job tonight of doing just that because Navarro's no longer got it packed in the back. They need to score to tie. We're two and a half minutes away from this game being over, and they have their, they're moving their whole team up the field now to score. The Lions have one less player, and they're still doing a great job of maintaining possession. It's not been a total domination like it was earlier, but it's still good enough that, that they're doing a, a, a good job. De Leon trying to run this one down in the back. He's got three offensive players around him. Diango gets it. They have a chance to shoot. They pass it up. Can the Lions get it out of there? So Navarro wastes an opportunity to get a shot off. They 
The Lions are able to steal it. Beautiful job by Cruz. Jorge Cruz is now playing in the back. And again, he's not a big guy, but he will get after everybody out there. And he did a good job of mixing that up. The Lions trying to go with a counterattack. Shot on goals blocked by the defender. Going the other way. We are a minute 35 away from this match being over. Lions hanging on to a 1-0 lead here at home, trying to clinch a playoff spot tonight. The ball's played down the left side for the Lions. We have about a minute 20 to go in the match. This is where the Lions need to keep it. There's a shot, and he kicked a field goal. It was a little high. The 11th shot taken here in the second half, the 20th for the game. The opponents have taken six shots the whole game. We've taken 20. That's how the possession has been for the Lions, and this is playing a man down since the 15-12 mark. So literally for 15 minutes, they've been playing a man down. We are under a minute now. All the Lions have to do is keep control of the ball, play some keep away with this thing. They're just trying to pelt shots right now. They get the ball around the corner. It's played inside. Lions shoot, and they miss again. So they're trying to get that goal. 12th shot of the second half. 25 seconds to go in the game. Barring a miracle here, the Lions are going to win tonight 1-0. They will hang on to that third spot, if not even move up to the second spot. 14 seconds to go. The ball's kicked down the field. Nice little bicycle, kind of half bicycle kick by um, Sanchez Diaz Jr. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your final score. The Lions hold on and they will get the victory tonight. The final one to nothing, the Lions. And again, in a game that they had to win to uh, make sure that they clinched a playoff spot, and I think they just did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the offensive and defensive players of the game situated here. While I'm doing that, I'm going to play some commercials for you. And after the commercial's over, I'll let you know who the winners of those awards were. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vipe Live. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know. 
the best of the story. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we are back here as the Lions again will win one to nothing at home. Uh, they were able to beat Navarro Vikings, and uh, it was a game that they had to win to kind of clinch that last playoff spot, and I think they did it right there. Um, the guys are walking over right now to thank their fans for being here, and I um, want to thank their fans as well for being here is because they were able to get their guys on the field and get them going, and, and to victory they went. And... Um, Good night for soccer again um, at the 15 minute and 12, 15, 12 mark in the second half. The Lions had to play a man down because of a red card. And that 15 minutes and 12 seconds just taught them how to win a game when you have one less guy on the field. And they did a fantastic job of it. I would say in the first half, possession was about 85% in favor of Lockhart, and that was with a very strong win in their face. And that's when Hoguer uh, Penazola was able to score his goal at the 745 mark and give them the lead. And in, when they got the win at the second half, it was all Lions. I mean, it was 99% possession for the Lions. At one point, I think Navarro had only crossed the midfield stripe twice. The Lions totally dominated the second half until the 15-12 mark where they went down a man. And then that's kind of when possession went kind of back and forth. But still, the Lions did what they had to do to win the game. They did not score another goal, but they got close numerous times. So with that being said, tonight's stats, the Navarro Vikings had six shots on goal, three in the first half, three in the second half. They did not have a single corner kick the whole night. That says a lot for your defense, have how well they played when that happens. And for the Lions, uh, it was nine shots in the first half, 12 in the second half for 21 shots on goal. They took one corner kick in the first half, two in the second half for three total corner kicks. Again, the only goal of the game was in the first half, 745 mark. Penizola scored, making it one to nothing, a beautiful shot by the senior. And that will now lead us into the players of the game. So on the defensive side, the Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game, there are going to be three of them. And that was pretty much some of the same guys just because of how consistent they are in the back. But we have um, Angel Cantera, the junior, had another great game in the backside. Anthony Parra, and I called him the karate kid tonight with the little bandana thing he had going on. Uh, the junior with another uh, defensive player of the game nod. And then the guy who pretty much did it all, the long throw wins, the free kicks, and the great defense, Daniel Sanchez Diaz Jr., the senior, ended up being the final of the three Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. On the other side of the ball, I'm pretty much going to go with the Chuck Nash. I'm going to give it to two guys. We have Brian Rodriguez Gonzalez, a junior, played in the center of the field, did a great job of setting the table. Um, he, uh, he just, he you know, the last game he did good things, but tonight he kind of stood out and did a did a great job for the team. And then, of course, the man of the hour, Hoguer Pinazola, the senior, who scored the goal at 745 mark in the first half. He also is our Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. So, again, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday night we'll have softball for you. The Lady Lions Tuesday night will host Travis at 7 p.m. And uh, the pregame will start at about 645. That will be a video so you'll get to watch from in the press box. We'll have the camera set up, and we'll call the game from the press box so you'll see the game like we do. And that will be Tuesday night at 7 o'clock at home against Travis. I um, want to thank Rosie Vega, the QA tonight, for listening and making sure everything sounded okay. And uh, she does a fantastic job for us and, and always keeps us straight. Thank you very much again, Rosie, for what you do. And I want to give a shout-out again to Jeffrey Michelson and Kevin Mills, my uh, board members for Lion Country Broadcast Network. Five years ago, these guys gave me the opportunity to do this, and it's been a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed it. And, uh, and the time has run down on season number five, year number five, but it's been a lot of fun. 
And having said that, this is Scott Smith thanking you for watching the game or listening to the game tonight, and we hope that you'll join us Tuesday night for girls' softball. Good evening.